In this episode of the Acoustic Guitar Build, we are ready to start working on the Ambrosia Maple Sides. We need to get these things bent into a shape that resembles more of a guitar. I'm Jeff, you're watching Home Built Workshop. Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. I hope you're doing awesome. We are back working on the acoustic guitar. Now in the last week or two, I was feeling a little bit under the weather, so I didn't make much progress on this build. While I was feeling sick, I didn't want to work on this, mainly because my head just wasn't quite right, and I was worried about making some critical mistakes. I don't want to ruin this awesome set of ambrosia maple sides. I did get some work done, though. I have the neck and the heel block roughly to size. I also cut the binding and the purfling. I've glued up the head plate for the headstock later on and I also made the end wedge as well. Now I'm feeling a lot better ready to get back to work. We're gonna work on these sides. For my sides I am using this awesome set of book matched ambrosia maple. I gotta give a huge shout out to my buddy Paul over at Waldrop Guitars. Paul hooked me up with this awesome set, so you guys can go check out Paul's work. I'm gonna put links down below in the description to his page. You can check it out, see all the awesome work he does over there, but thanks a lot, Paul. I really appreciate it. Can't wait to get these things bent and into a guitar shape. Now, I suppose I could just thickness these and put them in the bender as they are. If we were to do that, what we would have to do after the fact is we'd have to remove a lot of material to get the sides down to the height of the neck block and the tail block. That's going to take a lot of work. Now on the first guitar build, my friend Matt over at Zimbelman Guitars gave me a hand with the bending because I'd never done it before. And a cool thing he uses, and many other builders, is a template which has some of the taper built in. Now trying to come up with this template was a little bit tricky for me. My plans have all of the dimensions for all of the pieces on there, but it does not show the exact profile of the sides. Maybe that's because it could vary from build to build, and that's probably likely the case. But I don't have a clear template to use to trim this excess material away. I did try taking a piece of, well, Christmas wrapping paper and taping it to my existing acoustic guitar and tracing out the profile, and that sort of worked, and I might be able to get by. I think I found a cooler method that we're going to use. For this method to work, it requires applying some tape around the bottom edge of my mold. I'm trying to apply the tape so that it's nice and flush with the bottom of the mold. I don't need to go all the way around, but I need to cover at least half the mold. I'm going to go a little bit over on both ends. Now I'll place the mold into my 15 foot radius dish and try to center it up as best I can. Now what we want to do is scribe a line using the radius dish as our template around the outside edge onto this blue tape. The way that I found to do that was to use a pencil, but I found a little bearing. Fits on here pretty well with a little wrap of blue tape. That's going to allow me to scribe around the edge and get the exact profile of where I need to trim the sides. The only thing that I really found was that I want to raise this up so that my pencil basically comes to the bottom edge of the tape. I just found some little thin shims that I can put under each corner of the mold. Seems to lift it up about the right amount. And now I'll use my pencil bearing scribe thingy and we're going to just trace a line. I found a piece of acrylic that I think is going to be about the perfect width. I wouldn't want it any smaller than this, but I think this is going to work perfect. I'm going to now carefully peel off my tape with this radius scribed on it and stick it along the edge of my acrylic. As I'm looking at this, I found that I needed to reposition my tape so that the straight edge is actually this portion here, which would be in the lower bout area. I wasn't quite getting the shape that I expected down here, and that's because I just needed to turn it a little bit and use this line for the lower bout as my straight edge. And at the narrowest point of the waist is where it's gonna start tapering down to the width of the neck block. Hopefully that makes sense, and you can see how I'm ending up with a rough shape 
for these sides. Now as far as width goes, in the end we're going to end up with sides that are as tall as both of these blocks. But I'm not making the template this exact size because I need to have some extra material on there so that we can drive the bus later on. And also for any irregularities in the bending process, I need to make sure that our template is wider than the actual block. This is about 3 16 wider than the tail block. And I'll probably cut outside of my pencil line anyway, so I'll end up with, I don't know, quarter inch oversize from this template that should give us plenty of material for any wiggle room or whatever we might need. For a little visual reference, I used a knife to score some lines that represent the ends of the sides as well as the narrowest part of the waist. Well, after cleaning the piece up, I sanded the edges a little bit to remove those sharp edges. I've also written on there the neck, the top, the back. That way I can keep everything straight when it comes time to line this up, which I think we're ready to do now. I'm going to trim these sides at the same time, so to make sure they stay aligned, I'll tape them together with some blue tape. Then I'll use my template to trace the outline onto the sides. I'm using a washer to offset the edge of the template. This is what's going to accommodate for any mistakes I might have made in making the template. As long as I don't find any errors in my template, I won't need to use this washer to add some material next time around. So there's my two sides. The straight edge is going to become the top. The tapered edge is the back. They're cut in mirror because we got to bend these in a mirror image because one's for each side. Now we just need to run these through the drum sander and get them down to thickness before we bend them. I took these down to 85 thousandths. 90 is kind of where I'd like to be, but mainly because the grain on this maple is kind of all over the place. I figured it's going to be a little bit safer if I take it down to 85. Hopefully we can get these bent without breaking one. So let's break out the side bender, put that sucker to work. I've got my bender set up, I've got my spray bottle of water, some aluminum foil, my spring steel slats, and I've already done kind of a dry run just to make sure I've got my process down. So let's bend some sides. I'm actually kind of nervous at this step. <laughs> this is the one step that I haven't quite done 100% on my own, so we're about to change that. I'll begin by lightly spritzing the piece with a spray bottle of water. I'll wipe it down to make sure the entire area is at least dampened with water. Now we wrap the sides in aluminum foil. This is going to seal in the moisture as it heats up later on. We'll add our spring steel slats. A spring clamp will lightly hold everything in place as we load the piece into the bender. The heating blanket goes on top of this whole sandwich. While setting up the bender, I did come across one minor flaw in my control layout. I'm gonna have to do something about this. This is really tight. I thought I had a little more length here. I might have to increase the length on this cord, but I think for now it's going to be okay. As soon as we get some pressure on there, that tension will come off. Here we go. After turning the contraption on with this timer, I'm going to carefully monitor the temperature with one of these infrared thermometer dealios. I want to make sure that the whole thing comes up to temperature before starting the bending process. As it's heating up, I can start to hear the water bubbling and sizzling inside the foil, so I know we're getting close. <laughs> All the smoke burning off of here, because everything's brand new. As it heats up, I'm gonna slowly start adding pressure to the waste clamp. All the while, I'm constantly checking to make sure that I'm not overheating any one area. With the waist firmly clamped into position, now I can add the pieces that'll help bend the upper and lower bow into shape. Right here's where I hooked the spring onto the wrong eye bolt. I'll figure this out later. It didn't affect anything though. 
Now all I need to do is bend these around the mold to form the bouts. Bending the lower bout was a little harder than I expected and really this was because the spring was way too tight because I had it hooked in the wrong spot. It's bent. That really only took a few minutes, but it felt like an hour. That was terrifying. <laughs> Everything seems as though it's pulled into where it's supposed to be. I'm going to let this sit right here just like this. Everything turned off for, I don't know, probably a few hours at least. And just kind of let everything form, let everything cool off. Then we'll take it out, put it in the mold, and I'll repeat the exact same process for the other side. The jig seems to have worked well. These springs are a little tighter than I would have liked, but I think it's doable. Correction on that. I had this spring on this side on the wrong eye bolt, I guess in my haste of trying to get everything into place. I just hooked it on the wrong spot. Since I have two different spots, I just got them mixed up. No big deal. Well, there's one side in the mold. So far, so good. Right now, I just kind of have it temporarily clamped into place so that it holds its shape. Once I have the second side bent, and in the mold, then I'll use my spreaders to get everything really pressed into place. And now I get to repeat that process for the second side. Since you guys already saw me do the first one, we're gonna skip over that. And through the magic of television, we're gonna travel through time and return with both sides clamped in the mold. Well, I've let the sides sit in the mold overnight. I've got it clamped as closely as I can to the edges of the mold. And I think now we're ready to trim off the sides using a flush trim saw. I'm using the joint between my two mold halves kind of as a saw guide to help me cut the sides nice and straight. Now I need to measure and mark out the center lines of both the neck block and the tail block. Now I'm ready to glue in the neck block and the tail block. Remember, I already had these prepared, so they're ready to go. I've also done a complete dry run, making sure I have all my calls and everything in order so I know exactly what I need to do. I also have some little scraps of wood double stick taped inside. That way, once I have the glue applied to this block, I can just pop it into place and those blocks at least will help keep it from swimming around in the glue. I still have to worry about my forward and back alignment but at least I don't have to worry about it slipping off of my center line. Since I have everything prepared ahead of time, this process is really simple. Just add the glue, plop it in place. The scrap pieces of wood make the alignment super easy, and I can just add a bunch of clamps. I'm also using padded wooden calls to protect the sides of the guitar. Now before that glue sets up, I need to pop those little blocks off of there that way they don't get glued to the sides. And then I can properly clean up the squeeze out. I'm just using a little pointy scrap of wood to kind of use as a scraper to get in there and clean up the squeeze out. With the tail block glued in place, now I can repeat that exact same thing for the neck block. Now, in order to keep the video a little bit shorter, I'm gonna do that off camera, and that's gonna take me a little bit of time, but for you, it's gonna happen this quick. See, I told you that'd be quick. Now that I have the neck block and the tail block glued into place, now I need to work on leveling the sides. I need to first begin by trimming down the sides in the areas of the neck block and heel block. This really is just removing the extra material, leveling the sides to those blocks. With the majority of the material removed with a chisel, now I'm gonna switch to a flat sanding block and finish sanding the sides flush with the blocks. And now we will take this thing to the radius dish and practice driving the bus. 
Now I know that I'm going to have a little bit more material to remove here than what might be ideal. And remember that's because I added some material when I traced out my template using the washer. That's because I wanted to make sure that everything was good, especially since it's the first time that I used these templates. Once I go through this whole process and I'm confident that my side template is good to go, I won't need to add that extra material in the future. This time around though, it's going to take a lot of driving the bus to get these things nice and level. And I'm okay with that. We'll just flip this thing around. And there's another thing that I want to show you that I added to my template just to help make aligning everything a little bit easier. I've made up some little wooden blocks that I've attached to the sides of my mold using some threaded inserts. These blocks allow me to align the sides at exactly the same spot every single time and hopefully That'll make it a lot easier to keep everything in alignment. I don't have to worry about measuring and trying to make sure everything's centered up. I'm only using these blocks along the surface that's going to become the top. Since the top is almost flat anyway, it has a very, very slight radius. My idea is anyway that it's going to help keep everything in alignment. Of course, I'll need to remove these when it comes time to drive the bus, but for now, I'm using them just to keep everything nice and straight. I think it's kind of a neat idea just to help make alignment much quicker. I've got my bus driver hat on. Well, I guess I don't really have any hat on, but I'm going to pretend I've got a bus driver hat on and carefully radius these sides using the radius dish. I'm being careful not to apply any down pressure and just use the weight of the mold. If you're curious, I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper in my radius dish. Well, something tells me I'm going to be at this for a little while, so I think now's a good spot to wrap up this portion of the video that way I can get it edited for you guys to check out. Don't worry though, I'm going to pick up on the next episode right here where we left off. So you're not going to miss out on all of this fun driving the bus. It is a little bit of a workout as you're sanding away, especially since I have a little bit of excess material on here. But that's alright, I'm going to keep at it. We're going to get this done. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We got a lot done today and I'm pretty happy with the way this progress is going along. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date on all of the future episodes. We'll see you next time.